Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to Life on Earth. Hope you're doing well. Today, um, this is a topic that I was thinking about myself um, and I would love to kind of engage with you guys to hear what you guys think about this. But the question that I pose to you and what I want to maybe discuss in this video is if pocket watches are going to make a comeback. Um, this is something that I've been thinking about a little bit, was spurred on by something that I had watched within the last year and I thought we would talk about it being that we are about to turn turn to 2020 ending you know this the last 10 years where watches really have exploded so it'd be an interesting thing to discuss with you also please leave your thoughts in the comments so we can have a conversation about this because i think this is a very interesting topic um pocket watches are obviously another way that one can tell time we all know that you know you can wear a wrist watch in order to tell time but pocket watches are what watches used to be and they were used by just about everyone um so um, that's going to be the topic for today. If you are new to this video, uh, to this channel, be sure to smash that like button. You're supposed to do it within the first minute. I say it every single video, so be sure to do that. Also, if you are new, new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. It's right down there. I'll give you five seconds to do that really quickly. Um, all right, you should have hit all that by now. So, um, great. So, um, just to give you an idea of, you know, kind of how uh, I came about coming to this question. Uh, I remember watching the Hodinkee 10th anniversary um, one of the Hodinkee 10th anniversary videos, they had a, a summit called H10 where they basically ce celebrated 10 years of being around. And one of the panels was called The Italian Influence and the individuals who were on that panel were John Goldberger or Aro Montanari um, and uh, Davide Parmigiani, who is another, um, who is a watch dealer and obviously John Goldberg is a collector connoisseur. He knows just about everything when it comes to watches. Um, so, uh, you know, was watching this and towards the end of the Italian influence segment they had, uh, I believe the, the, the person who was interviewing the two asked uh, what was something that John Goldberg had, Berger had recently purchased or um, actually I have a feeling it was what, what should be your first vintage watch and he recommended the Speedmaster but then he also pulled out this really cool pocket watch. I believe it was from Arama Piguet, could have been from Vacheron too um, and it was actually a minute repeater and he ended up turning it on and allowing for everyone to hear the noise. It was just a really cool moment. And at that point, you know, you have a collector who's saying, oh, you should get into to pocket watches there. There's some very cool watches. Then Davide Parmigiani chimed in and said, hey, you should actually really consider this. I've caught a lot of them. So kind of funny that a, that a, that a watch dealer, but also a, an absolute legend within the knowledge of knowledge base of watchmaking uh, kind of chimed in here and said you should really be looking at buying pocket watches because of um, how great they are. Um, connecting kind of to me, um, you know, my family, uh, my grandfather was gifted a pocket watch when he graduated from high school. It's an Elgin pocket watch, time only with the sub seconds. Um, and, um, you know, I was thinking, you know, do you ever, do, do, I, do I ever envision myself using a pocket watch or carrying a pocket watch around kind of like, John Goldberger does. Obviously, John Goldberger does it with such swag and such, um, uh, you know, charisma, and he really kind of makes it out to be very a very, very cool thing to do. But I was considering, you know, do I think that I would be someone who would end up using a pocket watch and wearing a pocket watch as opposed to wearing a wristwatch? Um, so really, I guess, um, the, like I said in the beginning, the question is, will it come back? Will people start wearing and using pocket watches again? instead of using wristwatches. Um, you know, they probably fell off when wristwatches came about because of the ease of, you know, access to the watch. A lot easier to see, you can wear it on your wrist. Um, so I think there's a few ways that we can look at this, right? The only reason why they would end up coming back is if they had an appeal, some type of appeal to the, to the, the, the people who are going to end up using them. So I broke it down into three categories. Um, horologically speaking, looking at the beauty of the, the watches and then the functionality of it. So. Um, I thought I'd kind of go through there, tell, um, t go through those three categories, figure out if um, that is going to bring an appeal to those who are interested in, in watches, and then go from there. So horologically speaking, obviously, um, there are incredibly high-end pocket watches, and it's no surprise that if you can find a, a, some type of complication in a watch, it's obviously been done in a pocket watch, because pocket watches really were the first thing to come about. So. Logically speaking, I think um, pocket watches have, definitely do have an appeal to the collector. So I give that a tick mark in, in favor of pocket watches coming back. Um, there, they are obviously you have you know chronograph functions and you have tourbillon functions. A lot of you know if you look at George Daniel's um, uh, super complication, 
uh, junior super complication uh, that obviously has multiple complications that it would appeal to someone. Um, also, there, there are watches that have been finished extremely highly when you compare those to other watches that perhaps have, have been created in the past century. So, horologically speaking, I think that's a big tech. Um, they do have a lot of value um, within uh, the finishing and complications that can be found in pocket watches. Uh, moving into the beauty of a watch, I think this is another tick in favor for the fact that pocket watches could come back. Obviously, the finishing on these watches, like I mentioned, is absolutely beautiful, but the dials are also of beauty. And like I say in a lot of my videos, when you look at a watch, the first thing that you're actually going to notice is the dial. Um, so, you know, looking at pocket watches, you're going to end up noticing the dial as well. And of course, they're going to, to have some really beautiful finish into it. Interestingly enough, I also would argue that a lot of the times um, some pocket watches have enamel finishing on the back side of them or perhaps have a, a, a case that closes on top of the dial that are oftentimes very, very beautifully finished. So um, aesthetically, I think, like I said, pocket watches definitely get a check when it comes to the appeal of the beauty of them. Um, when it comes to price as well, when you consider kind of price as a, as, as a deciding factor. Um, some pocket watches are actually a little bit more affordable than than what than a similar watch would cost, um, simply by, because of the fact that not as many people are actually drawn to them, are actually kind of going after them. So that's something that, that should also be considered. Um, the last category is functionality. And when, when I say functionality, I'm talking about um, ease of use, being able to use the, the, the timepiece um, and unfortunately, I'm going to give this a no. And actually, I think this is an overwhelmingly large no. Um, unfortunately, uh, for pocket watches, people just seem to have a lot better time when they're wearing time on their wrist as opposed to having it in their pocket or on a chain. Um, people aren't, people prefer not to keep things in their pockets. They like, you know, just as an example for me, I keep my phone in one pocket and I keep my wallet in the other. I don't know if I would want to keep a pocket watch, especially something that's a little bit more expensive in the same pocket as my phone or my wallet. So functionally, it really wouldn't work out for me. I prefer having something on my wrist and I think this is very similar to, to everyone else. So functionality, I'm gonna give it a no, but, um, and unfortunately I think this is a, a much larger deciding factor when it comes to um, figuring out if you want to, have to wear a watch or not. So. Um, just to summarize again, um, I kind of broke out, in order to figure out if, if a pocket, pocket watches would come back and people would start using them, I decided to look at them horologically, the beauty of them, and then functionality of them. Um, horologically and, and, and aesthetically, um, pocket watches are exactly the same as, uh, as watches. You can get equal, equal beauty, equal um, similar uh, 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 complications that you can use in your watches. So that's obviously a, a, a positive for pocket watches. Unfortunately, they just aren't as functional, especially in, in today's era where it's even hard to get people to wear watches. Um, people just don't wear things on their wrists as, as much. Obviously, sometimes people wear Apple Apple products on their on their wrists, which I don't consider a watch. Um, but that's also, you know, something adding to it. Um, people aren't just aren't wearing watches as much. But I think in the collector sense, I think pocket watches might have a resurgence, especially if you have prominent individuals like Davide Parmigiani and John Goldberger or Alvaro Montanari uh, kind of advocating for them and showing people there's a lot of value that you can find in pocket watches. And it's not, you don't just have to be wearing them on the wrist. You can reach into your pocket like John Goldberger did during this, um, during this, it, the Italian influence H10 um, uh, panel and pull out a minute repeater and turn it on and make people really fall in love with pocket watches again. And I, I know that, you know, my grandfather's pocket watch is something that I will always treasure. Um, you know, it, perhaps it, it won't end up with me, but I know that that's something that's really special to my family and my family's heritage. So it's something that's to be considered because, you know, we kind of follow that as well. My, I received a watch when I graduated from high school. Um, so it's kind of a tradition in that sense. So it, it, it definitely has a um, huge influence on, on, on my life. And, you know, perhaps I will explore pocket watches and see what happens. I think it's all part of a watch, uh, your watch journey. And that's that's something that you can kind of get excited about. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this, this little uh, chat that I had about pocket watches. Please let me know in the comment section below what you think. Do you think pocket watches will, will make a comeback? Are there other factors that you should 
you should consider when considering the appeal of a pocket watch to someone who is interested in, in buying one. I'd, I'd love to hear um, your thoughts on that. Um, and if you've made it this far and you haven't already, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to hit that like button if you didn't do it in the beginning when I gave you that pause to do it. Also hit that subscribe button, it's right near that like button. So um, if you enjoy these types of videos or have video suggestions, leave them in the comments. And with that said guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time.